we're at the 2020 English Premier Yearling Sales for Cadet Lodge, where Greg and Simon will be taking us through their step-by-step -step process in selecting the new crop of horses to come through the stables. Well, here we are at the uh, the Melbourne Premier Sales this year, and uh, yeah, basically the outline of what we try to look for in uh, in horses is uh, a lot of elements. Um, it's uh, it's quite a process, um, and they've got to tick a lot of boxes before we uh, we actually get up to the sale ring and you know want to start bidding on them. But firstly, when you know we go through the process of looking at the catalogue. Um, I think you know there's probably in excess of 600 horses here this year. Uh, we've narrowed that down to about 250, uh, which a lot of work gone into that just to get to that part of the process. Um, and then uh, and then we come out here and we spend uh, many days out here in the early stages uh, before the sale starts, of course, to uh, go through, have a look at all of them, and uh, and narrow it down to the ones that we really like. Big factor in the equation is that you've got to like the horse as soon as you see it. it uh, that's a given, you know, as soon as they're presented to you, you know, and a lot of horses, you can see them just walking out of the box and you know you like it straight away. And uh, and it's got to have an overall presence about it. It's got to be athletic um, and it's got to be well balanced. It's, you know, and, and that starts probably in uh, in three different stages of the horse. You know, it's it, it's got to have a good length of rein, got to have a good shoulder, body, and a, and a good rear end on them. Um, you know, there's many factors. Uh, we look at the legs to make sure that all of they're uh, in position and correctly uh, aligned to uh, minimise any faults that uh, may occur in these horses. Once we like what we see, um, then we ask the horse to be walked up and uh, and have a look at its stride, its action, and see what it does. Uh, one of the main characteristics that we look for is a is a good length of stride at the walk, um, and that you know a horse has a good overstep and generally. That suggests if there's a good overstep that they're going to have a good stride and uh, and they're quite athletic. They like go forward and they're going somewhere at the walk. So generally that suggests if they're doing that at the walk, they'll do that at the uh, at the trot and the canter and all all importantly at the gallop. So um, and then yeah, once we get that sort of narrowed down and we like the walk again, we sort of walk all around the horse, have a good look at them again, make sure that uh, everything's in the correct positions. I mean. Um, and I think one of the key factors also is that their sensibility of what they've got been asked to do when they come out of the box. A lot of horses will come out, you can tell by their eye that, you know, that they're a little bit fizzy or a little bit rattled or, and, you know, that's a bit of a negative. I mean, you, you try to get a horse that's very sensible, um, you know, I think can reflect back on when we bought Pinka Pinka here. Um, it was a very windy day that day. She presented out of the box, she just stood there like a statue and everything that she was asked to do, she just walked up, walked back. Around her, there was horses just going off left, right and centre and and uh, jumping all around the place and uh, and that never fazed her one bit, which, you know, certainly identified to me that she had a good mental and mental attitude and uh, and she was very professional about what she did. Hi, I'm Simon. Um, I'm Greg's bloodstock consultant. Um, we're here at the Inglis Premier Sale. Um, we've been here for a day so far, but we've got another six days ahead of trying to find the stable's next champion. This process all started um, about six weeks ago for this sale um, when the catalogue was released. Um, I went through the whole catalogue back to front twice um, trying to find horses that suit our criteria. And we start looking at photos to eliminate any horses on confirmation as well that are not going to stand up um, just from basically looking at it through those eyes at the start. And then now we're here on the ground um, We've got it narrowed down to under about 250 horses. After we find a few here on our, for our shortlist, we'll uh, I'll liaise with the pedigree analyst and get the feedback from her whether they're ticked off or they or why they haven't been ticked off. So we can move forward and eliminate them. Go to the next horse. Horse has got to come out initially and grab your attention. It's got to look like an athlete. They've got to come out and have a presence about them, whether it's in the eye or the head or the body. Something's got to strike you really straight away. Um, and then once you over, look over the horse, you can uh, then watch it walk. Good body, it's got to look good in the skin, it's got to look healthy. It's not easy. You can go through a lot of horses and have a very short list of, you know, under 10 horses after looking at 250 horses. 
um, Greg and me are really hard markers. We don't accept, you know, deviations and that that other people are actually, you know, letting pass and slip through. They're just buying on numbers. We're not. We've got to get it right. We've got to have every year. We can only buy a certain amount of yearlings, and it's not many. So those horses have got to be absolutely perfect in every aspect. Um, we want to have good characteristics as a horse. We don't. We want the whole package as well. We just so we've got to look at them um, as well as when everyone's gone from here, stuff like that. Um, it's just all ticking all those boxes. That's what will happen over the next few days. So hopefully bringing home the next stable stars and. Um, give those owners opportunities to go in horses that um, everyone's craving at the moment anyhow. Okay well the process once we uh, identify the ones that we really like and we've narrowed it right down, uh, firstly we, uh, we get the vets to check the x-rays and make sure that there's, uh, there's no nasties there hidden there and uh, underneath that we can't see of course and then uh, uh, and that's a process that we use for our stable vets. Uh, we like them to do all our work, all the x-ray work um, because they're the ones ultimately going to be looking after them at the end of the day if there's any problem. So, uh, uh, and plus we can put a little bit of pressure back on them if th there is a problem. So, but um, yeah, if once the X-rays are cleared, um, also we like to do is get the horses scoped. Um, our preference is to uh, make sure that all the horses' throats are a one. Um, you can sort of get away with a two. Um, the grading process is, is up to five. Five is, is, is completely negative. That's, uh, that's, a, that's an instant no. Ultimately, you want to start with the best you can um, because uh, unfortunately, traits don't get better, they get worse. So uh, you're heading in the wrong direction right from the start. So it's best to start with a clean slate and, um, and we're very, very particular on that. Um, so the x-rays have got to be clean and the throat's got to be a one just to get a pass mark from us. We get our pedigree analysis done and make sure that uh, the dam and the soil ultimately match up and these are sort of proven statistics over years of time that uh, give us this uh, grading and uh, and reading on these horses and support she gives the tick and she's a very hard taskmaster if she doesn't tick them off we don't buy them so it, uh, her record's proven uh, through and through that uh, uh, if she says it's a no it's definitely a no so uh, it could be the best looking horse in the world, but if the pedigree doesn't work, well, it's, it's not going to work. So ultimately, um, once we get all of that criteria uh, approved, uh, you know, price comes into it. And then we, uh, we believe that uh, a horse is worth a certain amount of money and then we try to buy, you know, value for money and, uh, and give our clientele the best possible deal they can get. And um, we certainly don't spend overs. Um, you know, we've certainly been outbidded on quite a few that we uh, believe have gone overs and um, but I think you know our record justified in what you know we've achieved over the last so many years that um, you know we buy good value for money and uh, and you know everybody gets a good deal so uh, and once that's all ticked off up to the bidding ring we go and uh, and ultimately try to achieve the uh, the main result we hear is to uh, to buy them but um, and if we can't we're uh, we're back down in the yard and we have a look again.